The Detroit Lions have established themselves as one of the top three teams in all of football through five weeks. I mean, this is a team that has won three straight games by double digits for the first time since 1997. This is a team that has beaten the Chiefs and the Packers on the road. It's just absolutely ridiculous what the Lions have done this season. And the best part about it is that it's the defense, right? I mean, who the hell would have thought coming into this season that the Lions would have an elite defense? Now, of course, we knew it would be better. It wouldn't give up the third most yards in the NFL like it did in the second half of last season but did we expect it to be this good I mean I'm looking at a guy like a Jerry Jacobs who has three interceptions in the past two weeks I'm looking at Aiden Hutchinson who looks like he could win defensive player of the year I saw that one-handed interception live and I literally had to do a double take I was like how is a defensive lineman getting his hands on that I mean this is a dude that has four interceptions in in not even two full seasons i mean that's just unheard of that's more than sauce Gardner, who probably stole defensive rookie of the year from hutchinson if we're being honest and then you've got a guy like an aleem mcneil who was breaking out he was all over the field he forced a fumble he had multiple tackles for a loss this lion's defensive front combined with their offensive front it's one of the best in football i mean it's unreal and that's why i think the lions have honestly probably the best chance against the 49ers right now now the eagles are undefeated don't get me wrong here and the eagles they went to the super bowl last year but the lions i mean the way jared goff's been playing you've got david montgomery who might have been the sneakiest pickup this offseason combined with jameer gibbs and jamison williams once these guys get a little bit more comfortable in the offense jamison williams played in 47 percent of the snaps jameer gibbs obviously didn't play monroe st brown obviously didn't play but it didn't matter because the Lions still dropped 42 points. And yes, it was against the worst team in football, statistically speaking, off of record, but that's still a massive win. When are we going to start talking about them having one of the best coaching staffs in the league? You've got head coach, of course, Dan Campbell, offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, who, by the way, the 49ers stole literally the same play from Ben Johnson that he created and used it to score a touchdown. So it goes to show that, yes, Ben Johnson is one of the youngest, brightest minds in football. And although he does deserve a lot of the credit, Aaron Glenn does too. I mean, why do you think Bryce Young threw two interceptions? Aaron Glenn is crafting schemes and coverages that make it really difficult on a rookie quarterback. Bryce Young isn't a normal rookie quarterback. I know it's easy to say that because he hasn't played well this season. His team hasn't won a game. A lot of that is just the talent around him. But Bryce Young is very smart. He's won a Heisman. He's had huge drives, big games just about as big as any other quarterback in college football. He had just no answer for what Aaron Glenn was crafting up. Even the linebackers, man, are, are fantastic. Anzalone had 11 tackles. You know, Derek Barnes had six tackles. I mean, you're just calling everyone's name out here, right? I mean, like I said, Jerry Jacobs had his third interception in two weeks. Will Harris had a big day. He stepped in for Bryant Branch and he finished with nine tackles and a fumble recovery. Unfortunately, sucks because Emmanuel Mosley tore his ACL again, literally, what, two snaps? a minute and then he's just he's gone once again cj garner johnson's on the ir brian branch did not play in this game and we're gonna see who the lines really are in the next two weeks because they're on the road against the bucks and the ravens so if the lions can win those games i mean wow are things gonna start to escalate because right now this is the highest uh, i bet you a lot of you listening right now this is the highest you've ever felt about the lions and its franchise history but if they're able to go on the road and beat two good teams especially defensively I mean, we're going to start to have some serious discussions about the Lions legitimately being a Super Bowl contender, but let's talk about this Panthers game because there is some things that I want to discuss, even though it is a bad Panthers team. I mean, the Lions to, of course, take care of business just shows that this team is for real because this was a trap game. The Lions had just beaten the Packers last week, and now, of course, they're facing the worst team in football, a team that is desperate for its first win. The Lions, I feel like last season would have lost this game. Oh, wait. Now they think about it, they did. I mean, they did lose to the Panthers. That was a game that everyone thought they'd win. And, well, they didn't. They gave up, what, 300 rushing yards in that game? And in this game, obviously not the case. 99 rushing yards allowed and forcing three turnovers in the first half. Jared Goff looked like an MVP candidate. Jamison Williams did have a drop, but he also had a block on that Mon uh, Montgomery long touchdown run. So it was kind of, uh, it was interesting season debut for Jamison Williams. I mean, of course, this is a guy who probably only played in that many snaps because Amon Rice St. Brown was out. And then you got Josh Reynolds who found the end zone. Sam Laporta had two touchdowns, which was interesting. And I mean, Sam Laporta is one of the best rookies in football right now. He is literally breaking NFL records, which is crazy. And the Lions offense, I mean, let me give you guys a crazy stat. So the only times the Lions offense has had 350 plus total net yards in each of its first five games, 1954, 
in 2023. So you can see that this Lions offense is as good as any other team in football. Josh Reynolds, 76 yards and four catches and a touchdown. Montgomery rushed for over 100 yards. Of course, he had that 42-yard run that I just mentioned. And Laporta, three receptions for 47 yards and two touchdowns. He's now just the second tight end in the NFL ever in the first since 1975 to have a total of 275 receiving yards, three touchdowns through the first five games of a player's career. Remarkable what Laporte has been able to do, and remember, he was a second-round pick. Remember, Brian Branch was a second-round pick. Jameer Gibbs, Jack Campbell are going to be fantastic players, and they're only going to get better, but it's been the second-round picks that have been what have made the Lions such a dangerous football team. And give credit, of course, to Brad Holmes. I haven't mentioned his name yet because ever since he's taken over, man, has he hit and hit on these picks. And now he finally had some something to work with in free agency because free agents are saying, hey, look, Lions got money last season. They finished off eight and two. They've got the best culture in the league. I want to come play for them, right? I mean, how often were free agents trying to come and play for the Lions, right? I mean, this is a team that people have made fun of. Lions gonna line. I remember last season, the Lions got hot. They won a couple of games in a row and I made my first Lions video and the feedback was crazy i don't think i've ever had a fan base come together like that for my first video on them ever and it's only gotten better and better and stronger and stronger and it's only going to continue to get better and better as the season progresses because i mean the lions have an easy schedule they've got the sixth easiest schedule remaining i know i said that the bucks and the ravens on the road are going to be tough and yeah they are but I mean, why would the Lions not win those games, right? Why would the Lions not be favored to win those games? This is a team that has one of the most offensive defense, but they literally had 11 first downs passing and 11 first downs rushing against the Panthers. And then defensively, the Lions are eighth in pass defense for DVOA and fourth in run defense in DVOA. So you can see that this team defensively can get after you in multiple ways with the breakouts of both, honestly, Aiden Hutchinson and Ali McNeil. And then the secondary, Jerry Jacobs is starting to get extremely hot. We saw them without Brian Branch, but thankfully Will Harris stepped up. Also got Kirby Joseph, who last season had some monster performances, especially in those Packers wins. And then you got Cameron Sutton, right? No, unfortunately, like I said, Manuel Mosley, which is unfortunate because he honestly was one of the best number two corners in football last season when he played. Linebackers, Campbell Anzalone, Malcolm Rodriguez, Eric Barnes. Even Jalen Reeves Maven's a very solid player. James Houston's a guy that a lot of people continue to forget isn't playing. Last season, him and Aiden Hutchinson teamed up. They helped the Lions break the all time rookie sack record, which was crazy. Charles Harris, Isaiah Bugs, both very, very solid players. John Kaminsky is a great player. I'm excited to see what this defense is going to be able to do in the next couple of weeks because right now they have, without question, a top 10 defense. But can they keep it up against a Bucks team that is pretty sneaky good against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens? Yeah, so let me know your guys' thoughts on the video. I'll see you in the next one.